Hey, good morning, friends. It's Lisa with Blue Pearl Art, and I am outside today, out back, um, sitting in our lanai area. I thought I would do something different today. I'm not painting. Um, I wanted to come on and chat with you live just about a few things. Um, I'm a little bit nervous only because it's not something I really do a lot. I'm, normally I'm painting when I'm doing a live, but I wanted to share with you, actually, I wanted to just share with you, and I have Peanut and Daisy on my lap, so I wanted to share with you um, a little bit about who I am and my story for those of you maybe who, be, who are new to my page and don't know um, my story. And the reason I chose today, um, probably most of you already know, but the reason I chose today was because yesterday, good morning, good morning everybody. The reason I chose today was because yesterday, actually, hey Christine, yesterday was the anniversary of um, me being hurt and being, uh, becoming a paraplegic. So it's been 24 years yesterday. Still like I remember it like it was yesterday. But I'm okay today. Yet last night was kind of bad because it happened at night. So I'm like reliving the whole thing in my head. You know, every every year I relive it in my head. But um, but I'm, I'm better today. But the main reason I wanted to come on and chat with y'all today is just to kind of talk about maybe give you a little bit of hope. And know that through tragedy can come good things. And, um, I mean, you know, and, and why I do what I do now. And how I became, you know, doing watercolors. Because it was never something on my radar, ever, ever. I didn't take, hey everybody, thank you for coming on. Um, I didn't take art in school. I didn't, it was never something I ever even thought about ever ever I mean I picking up a paintbrush I never did never so I guess what I wanted to just kind of um, say is how you're you know sometimes your life can take these drastic changes and you don't know why and and you know what the you don't know what the bigger picture is going to be um, you know, I didn't for sure. And when I was first hurt, it it, it was um, I had to mourn um, three quarters loss of my body. You know, no control over it anymore. And let me just put this out there first. I don't. I'm funny about. I don't want you to think I'm like looking for a pat on the back. I don't like that. I don't like pity. I don't like to hear that. Oh my gosh, you're in. It. No, I don't want to hear that. My whole reason for doing this is to hope to inspire someone else that's maybe feeling bad, having a bad time, going through a bad thing, and knowing that something good is going to come out of it. It might take years, it might take weeks, you just don't know. But I had to learn the hard way that you ha I have to be patient. I have to be patient and um, to figure out what my niche was. So. Okay, so what I want to say was it took me years. It took me 21 years. It took me 21 years to finally find my niche. It, and I did a lot of things in between that time after I got hurt. I was a hairstylist, so I couldn't do that anymore, which I totally loved. I loved working with my hands. I loved creating hair, you know, pretty hair on people and making them feel good about how they looked and um, all that kind of stuff. And then once that was over, I couldn't do it anymore. I had to go work in an office. And how boring and horrible and yucky that was. But I had to do it. I had two young children. I had to do it. I had to work. And then I went from there, after years of doing that, working in an elementary school where my kids went to school, which was kind of nice because I was, you know, I was working when they were in school. So I had off when they were off, which was really good. I worked in a special education class and I assisted children with learning disabilities. 
very sweet, very rewarding, but still I wasn't creating. And I've always had that creating, um, wanting to do things, create things, make things pretty. And um, so I did that for about nine years. And then we, my husband and I decided to move to Florida. And we, I'm, I'm originally from Maryland. And when we go Ravens, I'm pumped about the football. Anyway, okay. So we moved here to Florida 10 years ago. And when we did, I didn't want to go work back in an office job. I didn't want to go work in an elementary school. I didn't want to do any of that. I had to come up with something. Oh, really, Deb? That's awesome. I'm telling you, I worked for a wonderful teacher. Her name is Jill Allen, and she was amazing, amazing, and so special. That was such, that was a really a special time. I really did enjoy it, but I really wanted to do things with my hands. I wanted to make things pretty. So when we moved here, I didn't know what to do with myself. But before we moved here, I did kind of dabble in baking a little bit. I, I made some cakes before we moved here. I would make cupcakes, things like that for people. And so when we moved here, I took about a year of not knowing what, what to do with myself. I, I didn't know. Uh, I didn't even, baking, I didn't even think about doing that when we first moved here. It was such a transition to move from Maryland to Florida where we knew, we, we knew no one, no one. Uh, my husband was working, so I was here by myself. We didn't have the dogs yet. And I would literally wheel from the living room watching TV back to the office area where is now my art room, which is over there actually behind those doors. And I would wheel back and forth to the computer, looking things up on the internet, playing on Facebook, whatever, and then coming back and watching TV. That's what I did, that was my day. That, that cons my day consisted of that. So after about a year of that, I was very depressed. I didn't like it here, actually. I was sad. I missed all my family and friends up north. But we moved here because of the weather. We moved here because my circulation's not great in my legs, they would get cold so easily. So we wanted to move to a warmer climate. Go ahead, come on. He, he, Daisy takes up too much room on my lap, so he has to stay. Okay, so, um, so we moved here. And you know, after about a year of, of wheeling back and forth, watching TV and, and okay, playing on the computer, stop, stop scratching. I, thought, let me get back into baking. So I started baking things again, and I found um, a farmer's market that was down the street from me that I, you know, went and found out who the manager was of the farmer's market and, and did that. So I started making things. I was in the farmer's market every Tuesday morning. I would load my car up and um, go do the farmer's market. And I did that for a few years, and I really enjoyed it. I loved... Baking. I loved um, making things pretty <laughs> on my cupcakes. The piping. I mean, I bought any kind of baking supply. I would go to Michael's and that would be the first aisle I'll go down. All the baking aisle. With special new pans, special new books, DVDs, anything to learn. YouTube, anything to learn how to create um, baking supplies. Now when I go into Michael's, I'm like this, blinders on. I don't even want to look at it. It's, it ooh. I don't even want to look at the baking anymore. So I I did that for about three or four years probably. And every Monday morning, my oven was on for like eight or nine hours. And I would just be baking cupcakes, sticky buns, cinnamon buns, um, you name it. Um, coconut macaroons. I mean, you name tarts. You name it and I made it. I made everything from scratch too. I didn't use anything from a box. I made my own... Um, lemon curd. I made my own. I made um, eclairs. I piped my own dough. I mean, I did everything from scratch. Everything. And after a while, it got to be um, very physically too hard. Like, I, my husband would come home on a Monday night, and I'd be crying. And he'd be like, What's, what the hell's the matter with you? And I'd be like, I, It's too much. I can't do it. And he's like, Then stop. Why are you killing yourself? Stop. So one Tuesday morning, I just went in and I said to the manager of the farm's market, today's my last day. I'm not doing it anymore. 
And it was such a relief, stress off my back. I just, I was, the baking part I hated. I enjoyed the decorating part. I, I enjoyed the baking, the making things pretty part. Um, so I stopped and it was like, it was like a relief, such a relief for me. But now I'm like, what am I gonna do? What was I gonna do? So I went back in my office, little office area, and I started making, like, I had some friends who were very into shelling, big shells. Shells, you know, because we live, you know, I'm in Florida. There's a beach half an hour away. So we would go and they would get shells for me. So what I did was I started, I started painting on shells and decoupage. This is decoupage. I would paint the shell and then I would take a pretty napkin and I would decoupage on it. Even on broken shells because broken shells can still be pretty. And then I would I would take um, Sharpie markers and I would just draw on shells. That's how that creative part would come and you know I, they're, they're kind of ugly but um, decoupage. I would decoupage on a shell. This is a napkin. And I started posting these on some beachy Facebook groups. And people were like, oh, are you selling those? I'm like, wow, they want to buy them? Sure. I mean, I get them for free, you know, on the beach. And so it was like a little light bulb went off. Like, people actually want these. People actually will pay for things that I do, like with crafty things. So then, like, I started going crazy. Like, let me go into Michael's, back into Michael's. It's the closest craft store to me. And I would go in there and I would go all the way up and down the aisles. I would be store manager. I would go all and down all the aisles. What can I make? What can I do? What can I what can I make pretty? What can I do? And painting was never and not even something I really thought about. Um, so but then one day I went in and I bought some those two um, the little bottle acrylic paints, the little craft paints. Broken shells are beautiful, Alicia. Or oh, Debbie. I mean, Alicia, sorry. Yes, I know. That's why I, that's why I do this. So, um, I, oh, really, Debbie? Okay. Yeah, it's, it's physically very demanding to bake. And because I'm sitting, I couldn't, like, you know, get on top of fondant and roll it out real hard. Or, you know, I would do wedding cakes. I would do birthday cakes that were stacked. And it, I couldn't, it was, my husband had to help me a lot because it was, it just got to be too hard. So I, I stopped. So one day I went into the craft store and I bought some of the um, craft paints in the little bottles. And I started painting with craft paint on my shelves. And then I bought a couple little canvas boards and I started just Zentangle. Have you ever heard of that? I would take a, like a black Sharpie and I would make these designs and I would paint in the design and I would do that. And so then, so then, you know, I would do that for a little while and nothing was really catching on. So then I, uh, one, three years ago on Easter, um, yes, Summer, that's what I believe. Three years ago on Easter, my my father, my stepmom came down, and my father does watercolors. And he came in my room, and he's like, "You got a lot going on in here. What do you?" I said, "I know. I'm all over the place because I was trying to find. I always felt like I was on the edge, like I'm on the edge of discovering what I'm supposed to do. I'm always. I always felt like that. Ever since I got hurt, I felt like." there's something out there. I don't know what it is, but I'm on the edge. And I used to tell my husband that all the time. I'm on the edge. I don't know what it's, what it's going to be, but I'm going to find it. And I'm going to just, I'm going to discover it. And you're going to, you're going to go, yeah, that's what you're supposed to do. So we went to, we went back to Michael's, my father and I, <laughs> and we went to the Dollar Tree and in the Dollar Tree, he bought me a, we bought a, a round pizza pan, metal pizza pan. Then we went to Michael's and we got, a, he bought me a couple tubes of Windsor Newton watercolor paints because that's what he would use. And he bought me a couple brushes. And he came, we came home and he would dab the little paint on the um, pizza pan. 
Anybody explain to me, you don't need to cover this. You, it won't dry out. It'll dry out, but it's not like acrylics where it's no good once it dries out. You can re-wet it. You know, you can wet it with water and it'll it'll come back to life. So, and he was showing me some painting with watercolor and I just thought, and how transparent they are. And I was just like, how beautiful these are. He would, he would paint like a little flower and then soften the edge and it would flow. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's so pretty. So I tried it on a sand dollar, <laughs> on a dried sand dollar that I had. And it, and I posted it one day on, one, uh, on Easter. For Easter, I posted it on the beachy page with my sand dollar. And the colors were just bled together on the sand dollar. And it was so pretty. And I got a lot of response for that. And I thought, okay, let me try it on some paper. So I tried it on, on paper. And I just, from then on, that was it. That was it. And let me tell you, paintings have a much longer shelf life than sticky buns. You can do a painting and last for years. So when I first started, when I first started, my paintings were hideous. I didn't take classes. I didn't know anything about it. I just would paint and practice and paint and practice. And you're going to crack up. I'm going to show you some of my very first paintings I kept because... I get to look back and say, oh my God, what was I thinking? What was I thinking? Okay, so this one, wait a minute, let me get a really bad one. <laughs> get a really bad one. And I would try to, I didn't know what my style was. It took years to discover my style. I didn't know. So I was trying all kinds of things in the beginning. I would try to copy a picture exactly. I would try to, um, I wasn't loose with my paintings at all. So here we go. I, you, Some of you have probably seen these. Yeah, I know. Look at this. Seaside Inn. I even tried to paint, like, what is that? I don't even know what that is anymore. I look at that and I think, ew. Ew. I don't, why am I trying to do a house? I'm not a, if anybody knows me, I'm not a, a architectural engineer, painter. I don't even know why I chose that, but that is hideous to me. Here we go. This one, I think I did it in pencil. Maybe there's ink in there. What is that? Uh, like, I, I'm trying to color in the lines, basically. I was trying to color in the lines, and this thing has been all over Pinterest, so I tried to copy it, and yeah. So that's that. And then I'm like, well, let me try like, adding a little bit more water. I was just trying all kinds of things. Yeah, where was I going with that? I don't know. I don't know where I was going with that. Sorry, I got my screen open. Make sure no critters come in. So I played. I played a lot. I wasted, well, I didn't waste. It's not a waste. Paper. I bought cheap paper. I don't know what, what I was thinking with this. But I bought cheap paper. And I painted every day. Basically. Every day. Now that might be able to be approved, improved on. But every day I would paint. Every day. And until, like, right, where does your eye go on that? Right in the middle of that black thing. Like, I didn't know anything. I didn't know contrast. I didn't know. And then after about a year, here's this, here's this one again. After about a year of painting, I was, I don't know. I, um, my husband and I went to this art, um, it's called Cape Coral Art League or something like that. And it's downtown Cape Coral. And it's, where they have classes, but they also sell art supplies. And I wanted to go there to find some better quality art supplies than what Michael's had. So I didn't know about online. I didn't know supply stores or anything like that. So we went to this uh, art thing and bought, went in there and I bought some really good paper and a couple more brushes. And they had a, a, a thing there on the wall and it said, you know, sign up for your classes. And he, I was like, oh, they have classes. So we, my husband signed me up for watercolor classes, and I was so excited. I was so excited. So here's another one. 
yeah, I don't know. Too, too, uh, you know, I don't know. So, here, here, this one. <laughs> this looks like, I don't even know what this looks like. A big orange muffin. I don't know what that looks like. I don't even know which way it's supposed to go. I don't remember. So, anyway, I signed up for art classes and watercolor classes. And I went in the first day. And I'll never forget what my teacher uh, said to me. And she said, and to this day, it's, it, it's, it rings true. She, we had a picture of mountains. She was showing us how to do mountains and how you don't have to paint. Don't, she said to me, Lisa, don't take your reference photo and paint the reference photo. She said, you're not painting a picture. You're not painting a photograph. You're painting a painting. She said, you don't have to use the colors that are in that photo. Just use the same values. And she explained to me what values were. I didn't know. Values are the level of lightness and darkness in a color. She said, you can have purple mounds. You can have pink mounds. As long as you're using the same value of color that makes sense in the photo. And I, so I learned a lot. I did that for about six, eight months I took classes there and I really learned a lot there. And then um, I started taking classes locally here closer to me and within down in Pine Island and um, I'm currently still taking them. So I'm still learning, you know, always still learning, but that's, I guess why I wanted to chat with you today was I wanted to let you know that even though bad things happen to us, it happen, happens to everybody and I mean, worse things have happened to, to people than what has happened to me. I had to put on my big girl panties and I had to just, I had to just fake a smile most days. Not that I don't have bad days, I have bad days. I get frustrated every day with something. Not being able to reach something, not being able, it takes me 15 minutes to make my freaking bed. You know, or to get dressed. I have to lay on my bed to get dressed. I have to lay on my bed to put my pants on. I have to lay on my bed to put my shorts on. You know, so I miss being able to just hop out of a car. I miss being able to feel grass on my toes or sand or to just be able to jump in a pool. You know, there's a lot of things I miss. And, but I'm so blessed in so many ways yeah, fake it till you make it, Summer. You're right. I'm blessed in so many ways and grateful. And, you know, I pray every day. And I just thank God every day that I have my two hands. And I'm able to create things again. Make things pretty again. And I love color. And I love to make things really pretty with color. And, you know, I just... It, it took years. It took years to figure out what it was I'm supposed to do. And if it's to inspire someone here or to help someone realize that through tragedy can come some good, you know, you just got to, you just got to pull it from within. You got to pull it from within. And you have to, uh, I don't know, you know, you just, uh, I just try to stay as positive as I can because I, I look at what I have and what I, and not what I don't have. If that makes sense, um, it helps that I have a wonderful, amazing husband. It really does. It it really helps because he goes above and beyond for me. Um, you know, I have a lift that can take me into my pool. We have a beautiful boat, and we have a lift on my pier that gets me into the boat. He is now creating a lift in the boat that when it gets a little warmer, we take the boat out and we go to like Boca Grande, we go to Sanibel. We have, he's creating, he's, he, we bought this like lift thing. It's like a, you know, battery operated lift thing, but he's creating a place for it in the boat to hook it to the boat that I will be able to get in the water once we're out. In the beach area it will swing me out and put me down into the water so I 
you know, as bad as things are every day for me, some things, I have to look at the good. And I'm so blessed. And I'm so grateful for what I have. So there is a uh, motion, motivational speaker that I really love. His name is Les Brown. And you look him up on YouTube. And there was this one motivation, um, motivational speech he gave that really resonated with me but it was more for athletes but it's okay one of the lines in that speech was if if you get if you fall down you better land on your back because if you can look up you can get up and that's how i feel even though i can't do a lot of things anymore um there are a lot of things i still can do so i hope that this has helped, you know, I just wanted to, only because it was my anniversary yesterday. <laughs> That's the only reason. Normally, I don't even think about it, really. I don't even think about it. But for people that maybe didn't know me or that just started following me, um, I just wanted to introduce myself, really, and, and let you know my story and know that, um, yeah, know that you can get past. You can get past. So... You know, if you have questions about anything, I'm an open book. I'm not embarrassed to talk about anything. Um, people, there's so many funny stories. I could wheelchair stories that I could tell you. Um, lots, actually. And yes, I have fallen in my pool in my wheelchair once in 10 years. And that's because there was a snake here in the cage. Uh, I back, he had actually, <laughs> that was not too long ago, actually. Because I have, we have two screen doors here, and I had left one open for my dogs to come in and out. And over there, my slider was open. The sliding door was open. I was in there painting, and I had this screen door open over here. And and my dogs started barking, and I'm like, "What are you barking at?" And I looked down, and there was a snake in the cage area here. But he eventually went outside because the screen door was open. He went out, and my neighbor came over to get the snake from the inside the bushes. He went in the bushes. And I was wheeling back. I wasn't looking, and I fell backwards into the pool. Dressed, wheelchair and all. <laughs> I wasn't hurt at all because I can swim like a fish. And I just started laughing. He, My neighbor freaked out. He came running in. I swam over to the steps and sat myself up on the steps. He had to go in and get my wheelchair. And I mean, it's a, some things are just comical. They just really are. So... I just, you know, try to make lemon out of lemonade, or lemon, lemonade out of lemons, and chicken salad from chicken shit. So, that's what I do. So, I hope, you know, this can maybe has helped you a little bit, or inspired you to try things that you wanted to do, that you want to do, that are, that's in your heart, and don't give up. Just keep going until you find what your niche is. Just keep just keep trying different things. I, I, I mean, I did reeves. I did, you know, wood burning. I, I was buying all kinds of stuff just to try and figure out what it is that I really loved and watercolors is what I really love. And I just thank you guys because without you, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be doing what I do, really. You inspire me every day to keep going post my littles every morning some some littles are a little bit more detailed than others some are quick and I hurry have to hurry up and get a littles in there but um I love it I really do and I appreciate you guys very much and if you have any questions about anything let me know um you know what uh, equipment I use or what um anything really really anything any questions just feel free to press um you know private message me or uh you know comment here or whatever hey aggie yes i do <laughs> i do offer classes aggie actually have a membership group where i teach people my style of painting and actually in february it's going to be um it's going to be opening again i'm going to be opening my membership up again for those of you that want to learn, it's a monthly membership group, and it's 27 bucks a month. You get to learn my style. I do two tutorials a month, plus tips and tricks and all that fun stuff. So, more information on that 
Um, and Aggie wants to know how I can support you as an artist. Buy my paintings, buy my prints, buy my littles. All on my website, blueprintart.com. I do have to update my website a little bit. Um, because, you know, my paintings are not crazy expensive like in an art gallery would be. They're not. They're not. So, I have prints of all my paintings. I have my originals I post on there. Um, my Facebook Live sale is going to be January 26th, Sunday night, 7.30. I will be having a live sale here on my page and have lots of goodies for you. Thank you, Summer. You know, uh, a couple, couple people said that to me and also they told me I should write a book. But you know what? I hate writing. I hate writing. I'd rather talk. Um, I hate to write even a uh, paragraph. I'm just not, I'm not, I don't like to take the time and do this. I'm, I'm not. It's not, not who I am. But I could tell my story and if someone else wants to write it, I'd be glad to do that. <laughs> really. I just am not, a, I'm not a writer. But I would love to go. That's why I want to do, I would love to be able to, that's why I wanted to come here today. Help people to, to not feel too bad and to know that there's something better out there for them and to you know I, I never really did the why is me kind of thing why is me why did this happen not I didn't really ever do that um I didn't know why it happened but I didn't I, I really didn't and it didn't matter uh, you know um the person that did this to me I was shot that's how I got hurt person that did this to me kind of got away um, that night but I don't know down the road you know always the first question ever is did they catch them and I don't know if they did or not it doesn't matter because my situation wouldn't change he <laughs> Kelly he <laughs> my girl Kelly yeah so um <laughs> I didn't think I have an accent but I guess I do I don't know anyway you're like hey hon and so, anyway, anyway, I've taken up enough of your time. If you need anything, questions, information on my classes, anything like that, please let me know. I'd be happy to answer your questions. And you guys have a great rest of the day. Go Ravens. I'm, I can't wait for Saturday night. I'm a huge football fan, and I'm sorry for you lovers of the Patriots. I can't stand them, and I'm glad they're out. So. Hope I didn't offend anybody. Anyway, have a great rest of the day, and I'll talk to you later.